Okay, so another graphical feature that is kind of new for, well, is new for polynomial functions is uh, the behavior of the vertical asymptote itself. So we know where to find them, but it turns out that the behavior, as you noticed, when we looked at some of these graphs, like this one right here, as we approached uh, 2, the function actually uh, went to infinity from both sides, and all these other ones, like this one in particular here, as we approach negative 3, right, we went to positive infinity in this direction and negative in that direction. And it turns out that the behavior around the vertical asymptote has a lot to do with the multiplicity that we see on the zero in the denominator. So uh, if you'll notice uh, real quickly, right, let me, my thing's off kilter here. There we go. All right, so if you'll notice for the examples that we did, right, this zero right here has multiplicity of one. And so uh, we, it's basically an odd multiplicity. And so the graph is basically unbounded differently in both directions. Um, I think even in this graph here, when we uh, graphed it, let me, as a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and show you that. All right, so uh, here for this graph, turn on. All right, so for this graph, right, we notice that, again, huh, having trouble getting myself zoomed in here. There we go. All right, so for this particular graph, right, we know we're ripping ourselves apart at negative 5 to 5, but both zeros have multiplicity of 1, right, because we would factor as x minus 5 and x plus 5. And so you notice, again, the graph is behaving differently around the vertical asymptote. On one side, we're going to positive infinity, the other negative infinity. At 5, one side's going to negative infinity, the other's going to positive. So the moral of that story is, is if we have an odd multiplicity, so 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc., then the behavior around the vertical asymptote is it's going to basically behave opposite. One side will be going to positive infinity, and the other side will be going to negative infinity. And we saw that basically three times for this guy, and this guy, and that guy. We noticed that about their graphs. The multiplicity was one, and so the graphs were basically doing two different things around those vertical asymptotes. Even multiplicities, well, this one right here, when we factored it, we got x minus 2 squared. So the 0, 2 had an even multiplicity. And so what happens in an even multiplicity is that we end up going to the same direction on both sides. Uh, for the example I did, we actually went to positive infinity in both directions. But there are some examples, as you'll see uh, throughout this uh, uh, chapter as we continue to investigate this, there's some that actually go to negative infinity. And again, that just depends on the function. So uh, if we have in a multiplicity of 2, 4, 6, and 8, etc., right, then the behavior around the vertical asymptote is going to be like such. So with that, right, uh, let's go ahead and just kind of approach this algebraically, and then we'll check with our calculator to verify. Notice that's part C. So first of all, right, how do I find my parcel, parsable vertical asymptotes? We basically find the domain. So that means where are the zeros down below? Uh, factoring this, we get that, and we can pretty much see that we have two zeros at four and negative two respectively. As far as the domain is concerned, right, we're talking about everything to the left, we're talking about everything in between them, and we're talking about everything to the right of four. So there's your domain, there's part A. Part B is to predict the behavior of the function at each vertical asymptote. Well, both of these have multiplicity, right, of one. So I expect, right, the, at the vertical asymptote at negative two and at four, Right, the graph is going to be doing opposite things. Now, exactly which way it's going to go, that'll come later. But we do know that in one direction, we're going to positive infinity, and the other, we're going to negative infinity because we have an odd multiplicity. So obviously, right now that we've done the algebra, let's go check the math. So for this one, uh, we have x minus 3 all over x squared minus 2x minus 8. And when I go look at this, let me zoom in again. Again, you notice we have a, uh, an asymptote occurring at negative 2. Again, we expected that. We have an asymptote occurring at 4. We expected that. And because the multiplicity was 1, notice that the unboundedness is going in different directions. So as we approach negative 2 from this side, 
we're going to negative infinity. When we approach it from this side, we're going to positive infinity. And then at 4, negative and positive infinity. So again, multiplicity, that's odd. The vertical asymptote will behave differently on either side. Um, for the next one, uh, again, finding zeros down below. Uh, what we end up having is solving that equals to 0. Factoring, we get x minus 1 twice. So the 0 is 1. So as far as part A is concerned, uh, my domain is negative infinity to 1, union 1 to infinity. And uh, that's the domain. At the vertical asymptote, if we uh, write this as x minus 1 squared, I have multiplicity of 2. So I'm expecting the behavior to be going up in both directions or down in both directions. And again, we, how to decide that will come later. All I know is it's one of these two behaviors. But let's just go ahead and turn to the technology and verify our feelings, all right, our, our algebra. So if we go to the next graph here and I plot that, sure enough, right, uh, there is uh, the vertical asymptote occurring at 1. Let me zoom in so we can see that that's... So there's 1, right? So there's 2 and 0. So 1 is right here. And so as we zoom out, you'll notice that the behavior, so as we approach one from this direction, or we approach one from this direction, the graph, the outputs are basically going to negative infinity. So that the, the behavior is the same because we have an even multiplicity for the function. All right, and then last but not least, uh, what's nice about this is solving the zeros, it's already been factored for us. So as far as the domain is concerned, part A, it looks like negative three and positive 5 are not good values, so the domain is everything to the left of negative 3, everything between negative 3 and 5, and then everything uh, past that. As far as part B is concerned, what do we expect the behavior at the vertical asymptotes? Well, at negative 3, right, the multiplicity is 2. So again, I'm expecting the behavior to be the same in both directions. At 5, the multiplicity is 3, so that's odd. So at 5, I'm expecting one of these things to happen, right? So maybe it's uh, down and up, all right? So the behavior is going to be different in either direction. Here, the, the uh, behavior will be the same in either direction. So again, wh uh, which one it is will come later. Right now, let's just use our technology to verify the algebra that we're talking about. And there you go, all right? So this function, uh, again, at... Uh, 1, 2, 3, so at negative 3 we have a vertical asymptote and as we get closer to negative 3 in either direction the outputs are going to positive infinity so that's because the multiplicity was 2 and then at 5, right, at 5 as we approach the, from this side the outputs go to negative infinity as we approach 5 from this side the outputs go from positive infinity and that's because the multiplicity was odd so there's your roundabout about vertical asymptotes. Number one, where to find them. Uh, that basically is closely tied to the domain. Um, and then once we have that, the multiplicity of the zero down there will basically tell us the behavior. Um, is the graph truly ripping itself apart in, you know, positively in negative infinity? Or is the graph ripping itself apart, but both sides are going in the same direction? And that's an even multiplicity for the zero down in the denominator. So much more to learn, more videos coming soon.